Hi guys, so welcome back to another tutorial and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a simple beanie in Blender. Now this is not an absolute beginner's tutorial. You do need to know some basic things about Blender, but other than that it is generally an easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to make the do the, do the actual modeling part, but also how to add this material and also how to add this fluff. So you get a nice result. Um, this head here is not part of the tutorial. It's just one that I sculpted. By the way, if you want to learn how to sculpt this very head, this is actually the final result from one of my Skillshare courses. You can check the link in the description below. You can try Skillshare out for free for a month. Sign up if you want. And um, I've got a lot of cool stuff in there like this. A lot of people have learned how to sculpt faces watching my courses. So if you want, check it out. If you don't, just keep watching the tutorial. But I will be putting the final beanie blend file on my Patreon along with this head as well. I'll just throw that in as an extra bonus for the Patreons. But yeah, this is it. I hope you guys enjoy and thank you for watching my tutorials. I guess I'll go ahead and jump into Blender. Um, what I'm going to do to start off with is just select all of the objects and press delete. And we're going to go Shift A to bring up our add options. We're going to go to our mesh and this is add in a circle. Once you've got that circle, you go here to add circle options and just make the vertices here 12 and then just drop that down. So we have a lower topology here. That's going to make things a little bit easier later on. So we're going to tab in to edit mode with this object selected. You can see up here in the scene collection, it's active. And with all of this topology selected to so make sure it's active, what you're going to do is you're going to go E to extrude and then Z to restrict it to the Z axis and bring it right up to about here. And then you can go S to scale it down about that much. You're going to go Control R or Command R while you hold the cursor over this edge. You can see the yellow line appearing. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to left click once and you can now move. And if you want to set it in place, you can just left click again. With that active, you can go S to scale it up. And um, what you're going to do is, as well is go Control R over here, click twice, left click twice to add that in, S to scale. And then maybe in here, control R, add one in, scale it up a bit. Just creating this rough shape here. Don't worry about the top being open. What we're going to do now is make sure everything is deselected. We're going to select all of these bottom verts. Um, I'm just going into wireframe. I'm pressing Z and going to wireframe um, just to select these. You can also use the X-ray toggle here. But what you're going to do is you're going to go E to extrude, S to scale a little bit, and then E to extrude, and then Z. You're gonna scale it up like so, and then you're gonna go E to extrude, S to scale, and just scale it in like that. Doesn't matter if it intersects there. You're gonna go Control R, add in a loop here, click it in, and then S to scale it out a little bit, just to give it some curvature. Now at this point, you can come in here and you can customize the shape of it a little bit, you know, pull points around, whatever. So this is just a rough shape of the beanie. We're gonna work on it later anyway, but what you can also do is um, select these verts at the top. So shift alt click on an edge and you'll loop select these verts and you can go control F or command F go over to grid fill and you can come over here and take the span down to two and then just mess around with the rotation till it's nice and lined up. So you can see here from the front view, it's like that. You don't want it to be off to the side. So we have a perfectly symmetrical object like that from our front view. Okay, so that's pretty much the modeling of our beanie done. The reason I have it a little bit more square at the top here is because that's kind of what you see with a beanie. It's made out of like a pattern that's been cut out. Um, you can select these and just bring them down a little bit, but overall this works quite well. So I'm gonna tab back into object mode, right click, and I'm gonna go shade smooth. There we have the beanie. Let's go to our modifiers. Let's give it a subdivision surface modifier. And because we have a low topology object here, something that doesn't have a lot of vertices to it, it's very easy to come into edit mode now and select some verts and move them around as opposed to having like a really dense mesh and coming in here, you have to select a lot of points, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. So this box modeling method is really good and practical. So one little detail we can add here and it's optional, but I'd recommend you do it. So if you go back into edit mode, what you can do in your front view, shift alt and just left click on this edge here in the middle to select it all the way through. And what you can do is you can go control B or command B to create a bevel and then roll your middle mouse button up once to add in a segment in the middle. And then just left click. While that's all active, go control minus or control minus on your keyboard. And it shrinks the selection like that. And then you can go alt S and just scale it in a little bit to make like a divot. You can then select these bits over here. So I'm just holding in shift and individually selecting these verts here. I'm gonna go alt S to scale them in a little bit just to have a slight variation here. And you can do the exact same thing here at the back, just kind of giving the idea here 
of there being a parting, like two parts coming together. You could also just um, go Shift Alt and just click on this edge and this edge, and then just deselect these bottom bits, and then you can go Shift E and just tighten those up with a sh with a seam. So Shift E. Um, that's optional, but um, just having that weighted edge there can give a little bit more definition. Um, but yeah, that just makes it look like it's two parts that are kind of sewn together. And you can do the same with the middle part here if you wish, but don't overdo it there, that's that's fine. So now we have our beanie modeled. Um, okay, so first of all, you're gonna get some textures and a lot of different sites out there, but I found this one which has this free um, texture. I'm gonna put a link to this in the description below. All you have to do is come over here to the downloads, you get some different size options. I'd recommend anything over 2K, so 2K and higher. For me, I'm gonna go with the 4K, which is gonna be a bit of a bigger file. I'm gonna go ahead and download the zip, and when that's down downloading, we're gonna extract the textures. Okay, it's done downloading. I'm gonna to go to where my downloads are. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm just gonna go and extract it. And you can extract the images however you want, whatever extractor you use on your computer. In fact, what I'm gonna do is now that I have those images extracted, I'm just gonna to go to my desktop and create a folder. I'm just gonna call it text for textures. I'm gonna take all of those extracted textures. I'm just gonna click on them, drag them into that folder. You can do this however you want. Just know where they are on your computer once you've extracted them. And uh, what you're gonna do then is you're gonna go back into Blender and you're gonna select the beanie. You're gonna to go to your materials, go new and click on that and just call it beanie. The material and then what you can do is you can go over to your render settings and let's change the render engine to cycles if you have a gpu make sure to enable it if you don't you can stick to cpu and under the render options here just to set those max samples to 120 and if you have the denoiser go ahead make sure to enable that as well as we're using a little bit of a lower sample but all of that said let's go over to our uv editing workspace and we're gonna do something really simple here just go shift alt left click on this middle edge here to select the whole thing Control e and then you're gonna go mark seam so we've marked a seam here and then we can go A to select all of it. We can go U and then UV unwrap. Okay, so we've just unwrapped these two pieces here. They're now nice and folded out. So let's get into our shading workspace. And we have that beanie material here that we created. Let's go over here in this workspace. We're gonna go Shift A, search, and let's just type in image. Let's get an image texture, place it here, click on open, and then go to your desktop wherever you have that textures that you extracted. Click on that folder. If you can't actually see things, if you're seeing something like this, just click up here on these little tile display modes, and you can see it like this. So we're gonna go here for the color. We're gonna go open image, and that's gonna go obviously into the base color of the principled. And you can see here, there it is. If you can't see it, press Z and then go into the rendered. You can also, by the way, just go over to your world settings if you want some light. Click over here under the surface, give it a sky texture, and just bring that strength down to 0.2 for now. And if you want to, quickly go over to your render settings up here, go down to film, and just make it transparent. I like doing that, works better for me. But let's get back to our materials here. We've got the beanie selected, we're in our rendered mode. We have that first texture added. Let's work on the scale here. So we're gonna go Shift A, search, and let's just get a mapping. And yes, I do know that there is a Node Wrangler that does this for you, but some people don't always know how to enable it. So to make it a bit simpler and not confuse anybody, I'm just adding these nodes in real quick. So we're gonna add in a mapping, take that vector, put it into the vector here, and we need to tell it how we wanna distribute it. So we're gonna go Shift A, search, and type in coordinate. And you're gonna see here, we get a texture coordinate. I'm gonna take the UV and make that the input. All we can do now is come over here to the scale, you can left click on this top one and while you're holding in the left click, just drag down and you'll select all of these slots and you can then do and type in a number. So I'm gonna type in something like 15. If you struggle to do that, just manually type in 15 in each in each um, vector here. But you can see here, it's a lot smaller now. What we can do now is get this node here. We're gonna go Shift D and duplicate that image. Texture, we're gonna place it down here, click on the little folder, and we're gonna come here and we're gonna get the normal. So both of these here are the normals. Let's just select this one right here, I, I rect X, click on it and go open image, and then bring it over here and then go Shift A, search and get a normal. So type in normal, and then you're gonna get a normal map. Take the color, place it in here to the color, and then take this normal and put it into the normal of the principled. Make sure that you make this over here, the color space, non-color data, that's super important. You're also gonna now take that mapping output over here, and you're gonna make sure to plug that into the input of that normal map you just added in. 
So it's sharing that same information. So now we have a normal there, but let's give it some um, this physical displacement. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go over to our modifiers. We're gonna go down and on top of this, we're gonna all add a displace. We have a subdiv, then we have a displace. We're gonna click new. Then we're gonna go down here to our texture properties. And the type here is automatically set to image or movie. So let's just come down here now, click on open. And let's just go once again to that textures folder, wherever it is. And the one you're gonna select here is this height. So it should say height, go open image. And now all you have to do is go back to your modifiers and the strength here, let's just set that to 0.2 for now. And let's just also come here to the level in the viewport and bump that up. The more detail we give that, the more we can see the results here in the viewport. But the thing here that you see here at the moment, we don't have enough detail. So the thing we need to do is go back to our texture properties and we need to go here to the mapping just like we gave the mapping here a scale of 15 and all of those vectors we need to come over here under the texture properties go under to our mapping and then change these values here both of them to 15 as well so whatever value you put in here put the same value in there and now we can go back to our modifier and now let's see what happens if we give that a little bit more. Okay, you can see the detail coming through a little bit better, but we need to give it more topology in the viewport. And you can see it's getting quite dense over there with the topology, but the detail is coming through a little bit better now. The more you give this, the better it'll come out, but that can slow things down a lot in your viewport. So what I'm gonna do is just leave mine at four, but I'm gonna take the render amount up to five. So that's the amount it's gonna render at. In fact, I might take the levels in the viewport down even to three. So now we have that. So if you go Z and you go rendered, um, you're not gonna notice that until you really render it. But for now, um, we have that out of the way. So let's also now just move these two down, these two nodes down here. Let's move the color input up and let's shift D to duplicate that node. Let's go and open and let's get our roughness, open image and then take that color output and put it into the roughness of our principal. And now we have that out of the way. So let's actually set up a camera here and some lights. So I'm gonna go back to my layout. I'm gonna go shift A and add in a camera. I'm just gonna place it anywhere, rotate it. This does not matter how you do it. Just get something that you like. I'm gonna go something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go shift A. I'm just gonna add in an aerial light, move it up. I'm gonna to go to my light settings, increase the strength to whatever I feel works and then the size. And I'm gonna go, go Z, rendered. I'm gonna see what that looks like. So um, that's looking okay, but the skylight we have here in the scene is a bit too much. I'm just gonna to go to my world settings and I'm gonna take that strength bump it down a little bit. And I'm also gonna take the rotation of the sun and rotate it till I think I get something a little bit more desirable. Okay, something like that looks nice. I'm gonna just grab this light, bring it down a bit more and duplicate it as well. And that looks okay for now. Let's give it a quick particle system, which is really gonna add something. So select the beanie, go over to your particles, click the plus to add in a new system, make it hair, click on advanced, and then under the source, make sure to enable use modifier stack. So it takes into account the other modifiers and then come up here to the emission and bring that hair length way down, okay? Now at the moment, it looks like it's not adding it anywhere, but it's actually adding it in the inside because the normal's a little bit distorted. So what you can do to fix that is just tab in to edit mode, select all of the topology and then go Alt N and then go recalculate outside. As long as the hairs are all facing to the outside, um, that's what we're looking for. So we can now go back to our particles here. We're gonna go down to the render. We're gonna make it B spline. We're gonna go down to the viewport display, take up the strands, step to three. We're gonna go to the children and make it interpolated. And we're gonna change the render amount to 70. And we're gonna leave it as it is now at 10 on the display. We're also gonna go down to the roughness and then just give it a little bit on the end point to give it some roughness and make it a little bit more ununiform and then randomize the size a little bit. So if we now go Z and we go render, you can see we have some fluff on this beanie, but it's just way too big. So we need to go over to our hair shape and let's make the diameter of the root here at 0.1 instead. And I'm also gonna go to the very top and just take that hair length down even more like so. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see that fluff looks a lot better. So let's just actually test this now. Um, make sure to save. And then we're gonna go render and render image and what that looks like. And there we have a somewhat realistic looking beanie. And uh, you can refine um, some of the settings a lot more, but one thing you could also do that I did on mine is sometimes you can make this stitching a little bit bigger. So all you have to do in that case is just go back to your node setup and then come over here and then change the scale. So you can go maybe nine, go back to your texture properties and change that accordingly and then see what that looks like. 
So now it's a bit bigger. So you can also go render, render image. Now you can see we have a bit of a larger scale here on the stitching. So one thing that you could also do that I did on mine is I went up here to the color texture and I went shift A and I went search. I just searched for a color ramp and I placed it here in between that color map and the principled. And then I just came here and I customized the customized these handles. I dragged the darker value up a bit to give it more contrast. I brought the lighter value in, but I also changed that lighter value to a color that I like. So I went kind of like a purple, a bit of saturation, but not too much. And um, yeah, just that little bit of contrast in the stitching, I think looked really cool. But um, yeah, that's an easy way to control the color. So what we could do now, I'm gonna quickly just import a head that I have that I made, and I'm gonna then show you guys how to place it on a head. Okay, so I'm back in my layout here. I'm just gonna import a head model that I sculpted myself. By the way, like I mentioned, this um, you can actually learn how to sculpt this head. Um, it's one of my Skillshare courses and I'll have some stuff to that in the description below, but you go ahead, find whatever head model you wanna use. And um, so I'm just gonna go ahead, bring mine in. Okay, so here I have my head model. It doesn't matter which one you use, um, just go ahead and bring it in. So what you can do is you can take your beanie, you're gonna bring it up to where the head is. You may have to scale the beanie, but make sure that um, you don't apply anything after you scale it because the physics here of your hair is um, looking at the scale. So you might have to go, if you do, set the scale you might have to come back here and mess around with the length of the hair and stuff like that but anyway once you have the beanie the right size to the head you're going to just roughly bring it in here i prefer to work in the right orthographic view we want that seam to kind of be in the middle there you're going to just bring it roughly in place don't worry too much of this penetration or bit sticking out you're then gonna tab into edit mode and it's really handy here if you have the subdivision set low so it doesn't slow you down. But remember working with low poly here in this method is really handy because we can come up here, enable our proportional fall off. And if both things are perfectly symmetrical, you could also use the X mirror, which means if we change a thing on one side, it should work on the other side. So in our right orthographic view, we're just gonna move the head back here, bring it down kind of almost over the ears and pop that back, but don't stretch it too much. Bring the head forward a bit. You do want a little bit of volume here at the top. And then at the front, what you can do is just bring it in, kind of hugging the ears a little bit. Don't worry if there are spaces where it is more fuller than others. But the idea here is just to kind of get it around the ear like that. And it doesn't have to be symmetrical by any means. If you wanna go and make it unsymmetrical, um, that can definitely add more realism to it. But that's just kind of how I'm doing this for now. I'm just gonna scale it in a bit. And that's how simple it is to add the beanie to the head. If you now tab back into object mode, you can see you still have all of that um, hair and particles. Now my beanie isn't really placed symmetrical to my head. I imported it kind of unsymmetrically. So I'm just gonna move my head a little bit instead of moving the beanie, which I know is perfectly in the middle. But you guys can see here um, just how simple that was. It, once you have the general beanie modeled, it's really not that hard at all to place it on a character. But yeah, that is the beanie tutorial. So let's quickly, um, I'm just gonna move my camera. So I'm looking at, you know, I'll probably just speed this bit up here. Um, like I said, this is not actually um, a tutorial on rendering a final character. I was just going through how to make the beanie. But I've got my camera here with a nice big focal length. I'll probably just take the um, aspect ratio to a square by changing the Y parameter in the output settings. So I'm gonna make it 1920 by 1920. And just bring my camera in here. So look, what does that look like? I'm just gonna have a look. Okay, that looks okay. Let's quickly give this a test render and see what it all looks like. And there is the final render. Now this has been a pretty quick tutorial. I would generally spend a lot more time refining this, but this is just a simple way you can model a beanie. You can save this somewhere as an asset that you can just import into a scene, add it to a character, change the colors. But um, that being said, I will add these blend files, including the head to my Patreon. So those of you on Patreon will receive that. You can check that out in the description below. And if you wanna actually learn how to sculpt this head, sign up for Skillshare. Um, if you use my link in the description, you can try it out free for a month. And if you sign up, that's also a big help to me. And it's a lot of really cool stuff on there, not just my stuff, but you get access to thousands of professional courses that can really help you develop. So if that's something you're interested in, it, definitely check it out in the description below. Um, but that's been me for today, and I hope you guys found this useful. Thank you.